about what trips are like on this mushroom and using ibotenic acid and the up. And then I've shown you every time that I've tripped on this mushroom with the tea, that's, you know, like just the typical tea recipe, which is a, about a 50-50 mix if you add lemon, maybe 70-30. And I did Soma on camera and I sort of talked about something funny that happened at the end of the trip, but I wanted to talk to you about what a full muscamol experience, what I believe its place is, when you should use it and what it's for. And other people who are highly experienced with this mushroom will echo my sentiment and tell you, you do not start with a full muscamol experience. It is a more advanced experience and you will have a pretty rough time if it's the first thing that you do. Look at the sun. That's cool. This is a powerful mushroom and a powerful medicine and it will give you powerful healing in ways that are so broad and so deep, depending on how much of it you use, whether it's Ibo or Muscimol and in between, but also the methods that you use it in. So the tea and oral ingestion is a completely different kind of healing and experience than using it in an oil extraction or using it topically or using it as a Soma, full muscimol in raw milk versus like the vegan fermentation method versus smoking it. And we do ceremony and I have videos on smoking it, lots of videos on smoking it. It is highly profound in how it teaches you expansion and healing and pre-birth and birth and up to about age six. And then about the self. I have videos about ego and how it teaches your ego and helps you grow and own your power. It's the power mushroom and all these details about the power. And then also about time and your internal sense of time and what time does for us. When you put the two together, your power and time, the two are not, you can't separate the two. And this mushroom absolutely uses both. And many people will tell you they sort of fracture out over realities and you time travel. And this last full muscimol experience that I had, I believe that muscimol takes you into really deep layers of brain waves, but keeps you awake and aware. And so the experience, sort of the timeline of it is if you start with a full muscimol and you, you're drinking it, you've seen me do Soma, you will slowly just get heavy eyed and harder and harder to keep your eyes open. If you started with an ibotenic acid, then you'll be up and busy and dancy, and then you'll start doing a lot of work. And then you will slowly start to get into the sleep phase or the fatigue or the deeper delta phases. And then if you've smoked it, then you know the drumming and the trance states that you get in before you do start to get into the delta states and time travel, right? And what I've noticed with muscimol is everyone has the, that pre-event time, which is different amounts of time for everyone. But once the muscimol takes over, then you go into those deep delta transient states where some people say they were lucid dreaming. I talk about that in other videos that it, it's that you're aware in Delta and usually you believe that you're dreaming. Well, you're dreaming in REM when you're in Theta and Delta moving back be in between the two and you REM in between there. Those are, that's an actual dream state. But when you're tripping, this is a psychedelic mushroom. You do trip, you do have conversations and see things, except that they are in a form because you're in such deep states of Delta, feel like and seem like a dream because of the brainwave state that you're in. And so it's interpreted as a dreamlike state. So imagine when you're tripping on psilocybin and the entities and the things you're seeing, you would think they were dreams if you weren't white ass awake. So you're not interpreting them as a dream, you're tr interpreting it as a trip. But I'm saying when you're in these deep theta and delta brainwave states that I believe this mushroom puts you in, you're tripping and seeing these entities and having these experiences and doing these things. But because of the brainwave states you're in, you think that you're lucid dreaming and they're not dreams. They are you working with the entities and working with the mushroom. And you can work with the mushroom and it is m my 
take on this that you should write down things that you're working on and what you would like to discuss with the mushroom and what you're coming to talk about most of my trips I say whatever you want me to know I'm here for it I'm yours I'll do whatever you need that kind of thing but every once in a while I want specific healing in a specific area and I bring that intention to the table and I will say the intention to myself before I start because it's kind of hard to remember when you're once you start going down into this brainwave states so for most people it's about two hours of tripping really really hard of being in these deep brainwave states and then when you come up out of it different people will come out of those states differently depending on how much you started with in the beginning of it so if you took a lot of it like you ate a whole cap or whatever and you hot dosed and you got way more than you expected and you were really strung out and high and twitching and having spasms and potentially seizing and then coming down out of that if you make a whole thing of soma and you're going big you whatever which i really wish you wouldn't do you need to titrate your way up to this stuff so you know how it affects you normalize your dose all that stuff average it out that kind of thing before you just dive into large doses again that is just harm reduction and common sense and you don't just dive into really large amounts but when you're ready the higher the dose then the deeper you're going to go and the longer you're going to stay but most people it's about two hours in the initial stages of when you start dropping into those deep brainwave states of theta and delta and you will do the bulk of your work there so if you set that intention before you got too deep in it like write it down and you can see it as you know that you're going you can feel yourself going read it and the mushroom will take it from there and you can do that work and then everyone comes out of that state and they're going to experience something different depending on the dose you took so if you took a low dose you'll come out of that state wanting to talk and move and be around people and you'll have incredible insight and ideas and this is where you should definitely turn a video camera on and talk to it talk to your phone get it all on video because you you'll likely not remember it at all you won't be able to bring it home with you so when you're in that state talk share and get it recorded the more that you take the less you can actually talk and put sentences together but still you may have ideas and things you want to say you know maybe you want to talk to a voice memo get out whatever you can get out the best that you can it'll sound really bizarre and fractured the more you've taken all the way down to some people who want to get out of bed or get up or do something and you just fall to the floor because your muscles aren't working and that was the case for me when I did Soma that time that I've done on camera that's that's on here on the website where I say I do Soma. And what happened was I was time traveling through lifetimes and I wanted to get off the couch and get to the bedroom and so I had to crawl. And what I did is I was crawling and I was looking at my hardwood floor as I was crawling and then all of a sudden I was crawling in the snow up a mountain and I was in another lifetime. I was male. And I knew that I was gonna die on that mountain and that I was dying. But I wasn't upset that I was dying. I was upset that I wasn't gonna make it to the top of this mountain, that I was gonna be a failure. And I was driven egoically to conquer this mountain, to get my name in the paper, in the newspaper. And I knew that while, I, and I was, I was feeling the cold and the, the snow and the ice and how cold everything was on my face and I was crawling, right? Then all of a sudden I was crawling on really nice carpet to a man's feet and I was crawling up his legs and looking up at him begging for his approval and to want me and to like me. And again, I was male. He seemed to be like a king or a very prominent member in society and I think I had made a mistake maybe I worked for him with him or was in his kingdom or was one, of his, one of his subjects or something I had made a mistake I was trying to get in his good graces and then I was crawling somewhere with a lot of dirt and it was I was trying to get somewhere I was female and my children were involved and I was being stubborn about something and I had been beaten about something for something I had said or done and I was crawling somewhere to try to get help but in the moment I knew I could have just as easily have stayed where I was and I would have been okay and that there was a better way to have handled what I was doing and while I was crawling and snot and blood was dripping all out of my face I knew I was being really stubborn and really wanting to prove a point I knew it when I was 
you know, and I'm doing this in my home while I'm crawling down my hallway to get to my bed. And there were other lifetimes that, that I was crawling. The mushroom said, look at you, it's shameful. It's shameful. Lifetime after lifetime after lifetime after lifetime crawling. Look at what you're crawling to. Look at what you're crawling for. Look at what you're subjecting yourself to. It's shameful, stop it. Why are you doing this? It's silly, stop it. You're causing your own pain, stop it. Stop it with all this shameful activity. Stop doing this, do you see this? Stop it, stop it. And it was just echoing and echoing and echoing. So that's where I was after that two hours because I had taken a lot. If you've taken even more than that, when you come out of that two hours, you'll be paralyzed and you won't be able to move. The mushroom is doing deep, deep surgery in your brain and it is best for you to not act out what you are perceiving and what is happening to you. It is grace that you can't move. So if you can't move, don't freak out that you're paralyzed. I've been in that position before for hours and to me it felt beautiful and like a warm hug and very comforting and I was appreciative of it. I'm just letting you know, the more you take, the more chances that you'll get to a point of that. And there's, we could talk so much and we get into these discussions in my community. I have a private patron group now, I got off Patreon. We get in these discussions about where that is and, and what's happening with Dave in um, shamanism with Amanita, but also in uh, Christian's group where we talk about high dose entheogens and advanced entheogen use. So we, we talk about this kind of stuff there. And there's a lot that we can talk about, about these deep muscomal journeys and trips and what happens in them. And then when you come out of that part of it, then you sleep. Then you'll sleep for about six hours. When you wake up, you should feel groggy and thick, but also alive and aware and color should be richer and food should be, be really tasty and this motivation and this zest for life and this deep intense connection to being here and why you're here and this drive and passion to be a better person and to live better and live more cleanly and more for the reasons you're here and why you came here and you feel like you've got weight lifted off your shoulders. It definitely has its place. But the people that you hear talking about what a shit mushroom this is and how much they took and they fully decarbed it and they used a three hour boil and these huge doses that they took, they did it all wrong. They started here, they got thrown into their shit. It was a nightmarish hell because they hadn't worked their way into it. They took too much, they got paralyzed. They saw all these lifetime experiences in the depths of it because if you asked, you, you put muscomol in your brain, it's gonna do the job and it's too much, too fast. It can be terrifying if it doesn't paralyze you and you get out and you start acting it out and you can do really stupid shit and hurt yourself. Like all of those are overdoses, number one, cooked improperly, number two, dosed improperly, and number three, and number four, used improperly at the wrong time in the mental health pathways of use incorporating this mushroom in your healing so i am telling you make it last do it the last the last thing that you do start with the 50 50 add some lemon go to the video where i say how to find your dose and that's for working with the tea when you have worked with the tea and you've done a macro and you've done a hero with this start getting into smoking start smoking while you're even micro dosing get into higher and higher and higher and higher doses of smoking we do that in ceremony get into higher doses with this and smoking when you feel fully versed and like you're doing really well with both of those then maybe topical with some of the oils orally i can't prescribe or say or condone or do because there's no science on it i do it if you do it that's on you i don't know what's going to happen to you and i'm not telling you to do it and then lastly once you feel competent then make you some raw milk soma. If you are vegan, make the vegan soma out of that, the full muscomol playlist here. And then start small and work your way up to higher and higher doses. Lots of things I could say. This isn't the time or place. I wanna get into it. There's beautiful things I can get into, but we talk about it. Uh, links to all of these places are here in the description. And I hope that you get the beauty and the amazing gifts that this mushroom can give you.
I don't even know where to start on the amount of healing. And the person is here that cuts my grass and that is cue for me to leave. Retribution! Oh yeah, we want retribution!